Hello everyone and welcome back to our YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to be showing you exactly how to read PageSpeed Insights. So hopefully by the end of this video, you will fully grasp the growing importance of site performance in SEO, learn how to generate actionable page speed reports, and explore some of the common web performance pitfalls along with fixes to dramatically accelerate your site. And I'm going to kick things off by examining why page load times and overall user experience have recently emerged as such a vital element for sustaining search visibility based on Google's evolving algorithms. And not too long time ago, relevance and authority were often the prime ranking drivers that SEOs focused on through tactics like keyword optimization and backlink building. Of course, those on-page and off-page factors absolutely remain crucial, but in 2021, Google changed the game by confirming that speed and engagement metrics would also now carry significant weight. So what exactly does this page experience update measure and why the abrupt importance after years of downplaying performance as a visible ranking factor? Google understood that while searches were providing users links to relevant websites on various topics, the actual on-site experiences after clicking often resulted in endless load times from bloated pages, annoying layout shifts as elements rendered, and difficulty interacting with delayed site functionality. So in essence, poor first impressions that didn't meet expectations even if content itself was useful. And these friction points led to alarmingly high bounce rates. And Google felt compelled to incentivize speedier, streamlined experiences aligned to what users wanted. And that's when the page experience update was born, comprising three core elements now ingrained in ranking evaluations. So we have the loading time, which is how quickly can static assets be delivered and rendered from servers and CDNs, while optimizing the code efficiency. Excessive lag is penalized. There is also the visual stability, so do page elements maintain position or awkwardly jump around during load creating a jarring experience? Layout shifts negatively impact the scores. And on number three, the interactivity. So once loaded, how responsive are the links, buttons, and forms to user interactions without lag or delays that would suggest an unoptimized site? So this was a big shift for SEOs to now balance speed alongside authority factors. But thankfully, tools like PageSpeed Insights help build precisely diagnose the issues. So how do we actually measure where our sites currently stand against Google's benchmarks and pinpoint the problem areas? And of course, this is where PageSpeed Insights come to the rescue. PageSpeed Insights is a Google's free tool that analyzes the real-world speed and UX of submitted URLs based on performance data from Lighthouse audits and Chrome user experience reports. And you can access it directly at pagespeed.web.dev with no login required. And to test a page, you simply enter any URL from your site, click analyze, and then scan the comprehensive report. And behind the scenes, PageSpeed Insights fetches the page using Chrome and then provides back a wealth of insight around numerical performance scores, speed versus UX metrics comparisons, diagnostics into failing elements, and actionable optimization opportunities. Now importantly, PageSpeed Insights is also integrated directly into Google Search Console. So for the existing users, you can navigate to the page experience report and then drill into the summary rollups, filters by criteria, and details on individual URLs. Having the ability to jump between search data and correlated speed checks is incredibly efficient. And once generating page speed reports, what should you be looking for within all the numbers being thrown at you? Let's break it down a little bit. So in running page speed insights for the first time, things can definitely feel overwhelming interpreting the mass amount of data presented back. But there is an underlying structure if you know what to look for. Results are segmented from both mobile and desktop performance. So it is imperative to analyze mobile scores being the highest search volume medium today. And at the very top, you will see an overall score from 1 to 100 representing the summarized metrics along with callouts around specific thresholds currently not being met. So frankly, anything under 50 is pretty terrible and requires urgent attention across the board. 85 plus is doing exceptionally well. And delving deeper into the report, you will notice various tabs like origin summary, field data, and lab data. And this was confusing to me in the beginning, but origin summary showcases aggregate level rollups across all pages on the main. And lab data focuses strictly on metrics tied to the specific URL submitted. This is the section that you want for page level insights. Further down under opportunities and diagnostics is where you can uncover tactical findings around root causes of speed issues. So from properly sizing images to optimizing JavaScript to configuring the servers. But before rushing into making any changes, it's always wise to cross-reference back to real user conditions outside of Google's lab simulation using tools like web page test and real mobile devices on varying the networks. 
And this validates alignment of page speed findings against real world environments before investing resources into fixes that may be exaggerated or edge cases. And now that we know a little bit more about the page speed results, what are the most prevalent issues that drag down the scores? On number one, we have bloated images. Photos, graphics, and videos are crucially important for engaging experiences, but also when they're not properly optimized, they also represent one of the largest page bloat culprits. Higher resolution imagery, unnecessarily complex formats like PNG and lack of compression all directly contribute to slower load times. And to fix that, we want to use ImageKit or Kraken to bulk optimize the existing libraries and convert to modern options like JPEG 2000 or WebPage. The next pitfall is the excessive server response time. So your actual web hosting infrastructure can sabotage performance through underpowered hardware unable to handle visitor volumes efficiently. And don't mistakenly assume that more servers automatically resolves scaling issues without considering balanced resource allocation. So some solutions would be profile workloads to right size server configs, enable dynamic caching mechanisms, and distribute the assets via CDNs. And the last pitfall I'm going to cover for today is the lack of content delivery networks. CDNs act as transient caching layers to alleviate the service from handling static assets directly, thereby accelerating delivery globally through geodistribution. And the benefits include reduced origin server load, lower latency via the node optimization, improved throughput rates, and decreased infrastructure costs. So the cumulative impact of even one to two seconds savings getting elements on screen adds up significantly, especially over mobile connections. And that will be all for today's video. Thanks so much for watching. Let us know if you have any other questions in the comment section down below. And if you found today's video to be helpful or informative to watch, then give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you don't miss out on any follow-up content that we can make related to this one.